Even though you may be frustrated like David, but still talk to him. Tell him how you feel. Tell him about all your troubles. Tell him that you don't understand why. Trust me, God knew it before you even got in that position. God hasn't abandoned you. He's right there. So there's the perplexity, but then there's also something we call the petition. Notice the petition in verses 3 and 4. Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Here is the petition. David makes two requests of the Lord. One is to be understood as being, restore me. Have you ever felt like God needed to restore you? He needed to just make you over again. He needed just to, you know, build you up again to be restored. I'm asking a question. Has anyone ever felt like they needed to be restored? You know what restoration is? It's it's renewed. It's when God has to do a new work. It's like, okay, if you have some old furniture, I know a number of you like to watch uh, the home, you know, the home home goods. You know, you like, you go to home, you go to home goods, but you also like to watch HGTV. I think I got that right. HD and HG, okay. And so anyway, you go there and you look at the furniture and some of it could be old. And you know, you could take some new, some old furniture. And you just put some, you know, put a little polyurethane on it or something. No, no, first you got to strip it. See, y'all, y'all not paying attention. Y'all, so you know, you got, you got to strip it. And then you strip it, and then you might get some, you may sand it down a little bit also after you get all that paint off of it. And then you may put some polyurethane on it. And, and then you stain it. And, no, you stain it first. Then you put the polyurethane on it. Yeah, okay. And then you look at it, and it looks brand new, Sister Shirley. It looks brand new. It could have been old, but it looks brand new because you restored it back to its original condition. That's what God does. God has a way. When you call out to him, when you're going through something, God knows how to restore you. Tell somebody God knows how to restore you. And so the petition is to restore me. And then he says, do not let my enemies gloat over me. Wow. You do know that you have some folks, and it's very obvious. We don't know exactly. It's not mentioned in the text who David was referring to. Some scholars believe it was Saul because Saul was chasing him. But, but the point is that someone was after him. He was dealing with an enemy. Someone was disturbing him, and he was disturbed that they're chasing him or bothering him, and he's talking to God, and he's not getting an answer. And in our lives, brothers and sisters, there are some people that are going to get on your nerves, There's some people that will do things that can get you worked up. And you will say, well, God, you know I'm your child, but I haven't heard from you yet. What's the matter with you? I I thought you, you know, I thought thought we had it like that. But should you stop praying? No. No. And then, you know, in the back of your mind, you must admit that sometimes you'll say, Lord, if you don't answer me, they're going to be laughing at me. And really, they're laughing at you because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. And so that's David's, that's his position. He doesn't want the enemy to laugh at him. In other words, he's saying this, consider my case and hear my complaints and enlighten my eyes. And that is, strengthen my faith. For you see, faith is the eye of the soul, which, with, with which sees above and it sees through the things that are in the natural Lord, enable me to look beyond my present troubles and see a good end to this matter. You have to get to the place, and and this is what David's crying out. He's saying, Lord, help me to look beyond what I see because it doesn't look good now. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're so frustrated, you can't see anything happening good, and you need God to open your eyes to see beyond what you're dealing with? David, is he's in that position, and yet... He's frustrated because he's, he's dealing with the natural, and yet at the same time, he's not hearing anything from his father. He says, guide me. Enable me to look about me that I may avoid the snares which are laid for me, and then refresh my soul with the joy of thy salvation. Wow. So what's the first thing we said? We talked about what? Perplexity. Perplexity. What's the second thing we talked about? Petition. Petition. And now look at verses 5 and 6, and we'll wrap this up for today. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord 
because he hath dealt bountifully with me. So in the middle of all of this, we can learn two, two, three things we're looking at today. David shows us that sometimes life can be perplexed. It can be very difficult, even in the prayer, even in the relationship with God. Sometimes it gets confusing because you don't hear from God. But in the midst of that, he presents a petition. He's still asking God some questions and he needs some help. But then thirdly and lastly, in these two verses, what we hear is praise. Can you see it? Now, out of all of that frustration, he comes down to this and he says, but, <laughs> thank God for the but. He says, but I have trusted in thy what? Mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. And I will sing. That doesn't sound like the same guy that was just praying a few minutes ago. He was so frustrated. He's talking to God. Listen, how long are they going to do this? How long are you going to be quiet? I can't hear you. What's going on? They're about to destroy me. You're going to sit there and you're going to let them take over? What's the matter, God? I thought, I, I thought we had it like that. Guide me. Help me. But then all of a sudden he says, but you know what? I have trusted in thy mercy. And my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. You know what? David trusts in the Lord. Uh, Lord's unfailing love. He's, he's trusting in it, and he rejoices because, you know why? Because God is good to him. And what is interesting is that we never read God's answer or response taking place. You, it's like he's giving a monologue. He's just sitting up there just getting it out. Oh, oh, God, God, help me. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Is he hearing anything from God? No. Silence. And I, I said this a minute ago, it's important to take note of the fact that despite David's frustration in not hearing from God or seeing his circumstances change, he still kept talking to who? God. To God. But while David talks it through to the very God that brought him into the world, the one that taught him how to shepherd the sheep, the one that anointed him to be king when he did not know anything about kingdom leadership responsibilities, while being frustrated and still praying, David remembered the love of God. Brothers and sisters, I, I just came by just to tell you that in the midst of your frustration, in the midst of the moments in which you feel like you cannot get the prayer through and you don't see the answer coming, while you are talking to God and while you're walking the floor all night, while you're about to pull out the little bit of hair that you do have left, while you're about to kick the cat to the corner, what I would suggest that you do is take a few minutes and just think about how good the Lord has been to you. David began to think about the mercy of God. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. You do know that he's faithful. His faith fails not. So the more you think about the love of God, how you know you should have been dead, but yet God kept you, how you could have been in the hospital, but yet God raised you up. How you could have been wild and out in the street, and yet God kept you. The more you consider the love of God, you'll be surprised that no matter what you're going through, no matter how frustrating it may get, think about the goodness of God. Think about his mercy. Think about his power. Think about his hand on your life. Think about how he woke you up this morning. Think about how he kept you in your right mind. Think about how he saved you, how he delivered you, how he healed you. And the more you think about his mercy, you can't help but get your praise on. You can't help but get your praise on. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, how he saved me, how he delivered me, how he anointed me, how he taught me, how he never left me, I can't help but give him praise. I don't know how you praise him, but sometimes I clap my hands. Sometimes I wave my hands. Sometimes I open up my mouth and say, hallelujah. Sometimes I say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Sometimes I just walk the floor and I think about how he kept the enemy from me. When they thought they had me, the Lord had a way 
of exalting me. And the same thing for you. If you look at your life and consider the mercy of God, consider his love towards you, you know you should have been in the hospital. You know you should have had AIDS. You should have had that sexually transmitted disease. The bullet should have hit you. But yet God, in his mercy, and the more I think about how good God is, how he gave me a job when I didn't have a job, how he stretches the money and supplies every need. Morning by morning, I feel something here. Morning by morning, new mercy I see. Great, great, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness toward the children of men. Praise him. Take time to praise the Lord. In the midst of your frustration, God is at work. You may not be able to see him, but trust me, he's working. Because the Bible says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not get weary. Wait on them. Wait on them. Trust him. Trust him. Depend on him. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall. I said he shall. Not might, but he shall. He shall. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Praise him. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. I may not understand it, but I'm going to praise you. I may not see it, but I'm going to bless your name. Because you're good, your mercy, 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 endure it forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never be ashamed to give God praise. When you get frustrated and you don't see things happening in your life and you're talking to God, just pause for a few minutes like David. And you know, the more you keep talking to God and venting it out, you will find that at some moment it's like something said, hey, wait a minute. Didn't God save you? Wait a minute. Didn't I heal you? Wait a minute. Didn't I open that door for you? And the more you start thinking about that, <laughs> you can't help. See, God can take the frustration and turn it into celebration. Hallelujah. I say, hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He turns the frustration into celebration. No matter what you've been through, what you're going through, trust me, God sees you. He knows where you are. Never give up. Yes, keep talking to him. God knows you're upset. It's okay. Keep talking to him. But as you're talking, watch him. Just pull your, pull your coat for a minute. Hey, yo, what's up? Yo, hey, 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 hey. How in the world did you get where you are? And then he'll start bringing it back to your remembrance. You know what he does to me every now and then? He reminds me of people who I used to know.